We're going to start with a review of cyclic quadrilaterals, including Ptolemy's theorem. To skip this and go straight to the solution, look for the link in the video description. We'll start with Ptolemy's theorem, which applies to cyclic quadrilaterals, which tells us that the product of the two diagonals is equal to the sum of the product of both pairs of opposite sides. Let's prove this. We'll find a point E on diagonal AC such that angle EBC is the same as angle ABD. Since arc AB is demarcated by both angles C and D, these two angles are also congruent. So by angle-angle, we have triangle EBC is similar to triangle ABD. And so the corresponding sides BC and BD, that ratio is the same as the ratio of the corresponding sides EC and AD. Multiplying by the denominators, we get this equation. We'll call this equation 1. Since EBC, the larger angle on the left, and ABD, the larger angle on the right, are congruent, and they both contain the small inner angle EBD, then we have these smaller angles on the left and right are equal to each other. So we have angle ABE is equal to angle CBD. And if you look at arc BC, we have that it is cut off by this angle at A and this angle at D. So we have angle CAB is equal to angle CDB. And again, by angle angle, we have triangle ABE is similar to triangle DBC. We'll compare two pairs of corresponding sides. AB over DB is equal to AE over DC. And multiplying, we get this equation. We'll call it equation two. Now we'll add these two equations. We'll factor BD from the right-hand side. AE plus EC, that's just this diagonal AC. And we have what we set out to prove. This is the product of the two diagonals. And here we have the sum of the products of the opposite sides. The other property of cyclic quadrilaterals that I want to point out, let's say you have a circle with two congruent chords. If you use these chords to form two opposite sides of a cyclic quadrilateral, let's draw in the diagonals. Let's call this angle X, an inscribed angle which cuts off arc BC. That's the same as this angle X. We also have this angle we'll call Y. It's an inscribed angle that cuts off this minor arc AD, so this is also Y because it cuts off the same minor arc. We'll call these two vertical angles Z. If P is the intersecting point of our two diagonals, then we have triangle ABP is congruent to triangle CPD because they have this third side that's congruent and all three angles are congruent. So the corresponding sides AP and DP are equal to each other. So we have that triangle APD is isosceles. If we call this angle V and this angle V, because they're both inscribed angles cutting off arc CD, and then we call this W and this W because they both inscribe arc AB. With this isosceles triangle, the base angles are V and W, and they are equal to each other. This angle up here is equal to W, so we have alternate interior angles that are congruent. AD is parallel to BC. So anytime you have a cyclic quadrilateral with two congruent sides, you're going to have an isosceles trapezoid. Let's return to the problem. An Amy hack is to draw simplified diagrams in your geometry problems when it gets too complicated. I have here the hexagon. Let's say the radius of circle omega 1 is R, so we have O1C and O1B are both R. The distance from O2 to A and D is S. That'll be the radius of circle omega 2. We're given that CD is 16 and AB is 2. Since omega 1 and omega 2 are tangent, we have the distance between the centers of the circles is R plus S, and we're given that that is 15. Notice that if we take our hexagon and reverse the locations of A and B, so that A moves to A prime and B moves to, to B prime, the area of our new hexagon is the same as the area of our old. So the distance from O1 to A prime is going to be the same as the distance from O2 to A, S, and the distance from O2 to B prime is going to be the same as the distance from O1 to B, which is R. Now we're going to make use of the fact that if you have congruent chords on a circle, they're going to cut off 
arcs that are also congruent. So for example, if we look at the arc of the circle that circumscribes this hexagon, if we look at the arc from A prime all the way to D, that's gonna be cut off by three chords of length two, R, and S. The sum of these three arcs adds up to the arc from A prime D. The arc from B prime to C is also cut off by chords of length R, S, and two. So the inscribed angles, A prime C, D, and B prime D, C, are congruent. If you look at the adjacent chords that have lengths R, S, and 16, we have angle B prime, A prime, C is equal to angle A prime, B prime, D. Redrawing our shape, we have that <clears throat> quadrilateral A prime, B prime, D, C is an isosceles trapezoid. The bases are 2 and 16. Notice as well the cyclic quadrilateral with vertices a prime, O2, D, and O1, because they have these opposite side lengths, are both S, the radius of circle omega 2. This is also an isosceles trapezoid. Isosceles trapezoids have congruent diagonals. We know that the distance from O1 to O2 is 15. That's going to be the same as the distance from A prime to D. A prime D is also this diagonal of our other isosceles trapezoid. So 15 is the length of the other diagonal, B prime. C. Since these two lengths are congruent, we have that the triangles on either side are congruent to each other as well. Those are triangles O1, A prime C, and triangle O2, B prime D. So the plan now is to find the area of our hexagon by finding the area of the trapezoid in the middle, A prime B prime D C, and add to it two times the area of one of the triangles on the side, O1, A prime C. Let's start with the trapezoid. We'll find the height of this trapezoid by drawing this altitude. Subtracting 2 from 16 and dividing by 2, we have the distance from C to P is 7, and the distance from P to D is 9. Recall that the distance from A prime to D is 15, and triangle A prime B D looks like a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so the height is 12. So the area of our trapezoid is 108. Now we want to find the area of this small triangle on the left. Let's see if we can find the length from A prime to C, which is also part of the trapezoid. We'll apply the Pythagorean theorem to triangle A prime PC. So A prime C is the square root of 193. I'd like to find this angle at O1. So let's take a look at cyclic quadrilateral A prime DC O1. Because they are opposite angles, angle A prime O1 C and angle A prime DC add up to 180 degrees. Remember this angle at D was part of this right triangle A prime PD that was a 3, 4, 5 triangle. The sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse or 4 fifths. Remember that the sine of an angle is equal to the sine of its supplement. That means the sine of our angle at D is the same as our sine of A prime O1C that we're interested in. We can use that now to find the area of this small triangle O1 A prime C. The two side lengths are R and S. Substituting, we get 2 fifths times R times S. Now we need to figure out what the product of R and S is. Returning to our original diagram, we have that the sum of the radii of our two circles that are tangent is equal to 15. We know the length of this third side is the square root of 193. So let's use the law of cosines on triangle O1 A prime C. If the sine of this angle is 4 fifths, then the cosine is 3 fifths. But it's also an obtuse angle, so the cosine is actually negative. And the square of A prime C is 193. Let's square R plus S and solve for R squared plus S squared. We'll plug this in and solve for R times S, which is 40. We can plug that in up here. 2 fifths of 40 is 16. We have two of these triangles, and we're going to add it to the area of our trapezoid. So the area of our hexagon is 140. If you'd like me to solve any other AMC or Amy problems, please leave them in the comments.